Hello, it's Lee with AppointmentReminder.com. Wanted to go through how to set up Outlook slash Office 365 with AppointmentReminder.com. A uh, little bit more in-depth demo uh, overview of the system since we've updated the, the look of it and just really go into the features uh, that are available for Office 365 and Outlook. One of the main uh, issues that we usually run into with users is they don't quite understand the difference between 365 and Outlook. Uh, most Outlook accounts that are used on the desktop account or a desktop uh, version are now backed up to the cloud or the Office 365. So whether you're using the web version of Office 365 or Outlook and or the desktop version really the process is going to be the same for setting up the calendars. We're just going to sync the calendars uh, from your email account typically, and then we'll be grabbing the information off the appointments. So here we are, we're in a new uh, setup account. Uh, nothing's been added here. And simply all you need to do is go up to the settings tab, and then we're gonna go to add calendar. And you'll, you'll see a couple different options here. We're, we're working on setting up the Office 365 Outlook calendar. So just go ahead and click this. And at this point, it's going to prompt you if you aren't signed into an Outlook account to sign into one. In this case, I am signed into an account. So uh, we're just gonna pick this. And then it's going to reach out and see what uh, calendars are available. So. Um, this is my main calendar that I use on Office 365 here. And you can see here there's a shared calendar not listed above. Typically, the shared calendars will display here if you have a shared calendar with somebody else on Outlook. Uh, but if not, just hit the shared calendar not listed above. Typically, you put in the email address that it's shared with and it can reach out and find it. Uh, be aware if you have a really strict IT department that you're working with, you may not be able to sync either with a shared calendar or with your calendar, depending on what restrictions are in place. So if you're having problems with this step, make sure that you reach out to your IT department uh, to, to see if they can help you. So we're just gonna connect to this uh, 365. Now I use the web version of 365, but it's, it's still going to be the same. And if you hit show advanced options, this is just giving us some options for when we want to set the display of our calendar uh, in appointmentreminder.com. I'm just going to leave that blank. Sync all day events. The, that's something to be aware of. If you're blocking time on your calendar, say you're on vacation and you want a day where somebody, uh, where basically there's no appointments, you could sync all day appointments and or if you just have all day appointments. And then you can only sync appointments created by the user myself. So what that means is if I'm on another appointment on my calendar that I was an, an invitee to that appointment, uh, it will not sync that appointment, only the ones that I create itself. So I'm going to just bring everything over and we're going to hit connect here. This is going to reach out, connect to the calendar, and we got a success here. It might take just a couple minutes to bring over the information. Usually it's pretty quick, uh, but uh, we'll give it a little bit of time here as that syncs and looks like we've already got stuff pulled in. So from here, uh, what you wanna do is go into the settings section and we're gonna go to edit calendars. And this is where you're going to find uh, pretty much all the settings for your Office 365 or Outlook integration here. And over on the right-hand side, there's just a little gear wheel. And we're gonna hit the edit button here so that we can go in and look at the uh, particular settings. <clears throat> now, right on the top, I can tell the system what I want to send out. So whether I want text, email, or voice, uh, I don't want voice in this case. Uh, one note, note on voice, you do need to have your caller ID set up. Uh, there's some instructions to follow uh, if you are going to be doing voice calls with this system. I can rename the description of the calendar. So this just says calendar. Uh, but if I wanted to, to put on here Lee's calendar or something like that, I could do that. Now, the default script is just, we'll go through that in just a minute. And we're going to use a business default timing for when we're going to send things. You could set your business time zone. 
um, you can tell the calendar color in this case what it wants to display now this is going to be for what the calendar looks like an appointment reminder but when you get this all set up you should have to do very little inside appointment reminder everything can be done in office 365 we'll pull that information across to appointmentreminder.com send the reminders and then we'll write and update the information back to outlook so you don't need to be logged into our system in that case these are just different display options here. And if you have any open or closed days, you can select that here. Uh, over to the Office 365 options. So you'll have a couple different options. Uh, negative keywords. So negative keywords are words that we're not going to send a reminder if we see that on the appointment, anywhere on the appointment. So if you type the word no send down in the description of the appointment and or the title of the appointment, it, we will not send a reminder. Um, some other people sometimes will add the word cancel or canceled uh, in the case that maybe you don't delete an appointment that was canceled on your uh, appointment or on your calendar, you just leave it. Um, make sure you type like canceled in here so it won't send a reminder. And this is uh, some of the options. So update the event title, uh, adds confirmed, uh, rescheduled to the end of the event title. So when you're in a, a appointmentreminder.com, uh, excuse me, when you're in Outlook and you're making your appointments, we can update the, the, the event of the calendar directly in it. So when we come here, and what I'm talking about is if we have an appointment, Oops. We can update the title line and or the description of the event uh, for, for items that are happening with the reminder. So in this case, it's saying when we get a confirmation, add confirmed to the end of the event title. Yes, we want to update uh, appointment uh, the Outlook calendar in that case. Update the event description. So if someone replies to us, we don't know what they're saying. Maybe they said, hey, I'm going to be late. Um, that's not a yes or a no in our system. So we'll just add whatever they say to the description of the event itself. So that's going to go down below here in this description section. Sync all day events, kind of same thing we talked about already. Two-way sync. Uh, I don't recommend this, but it is possible. So you can add a, an appointment or event inside appointmentreminder.com calendar, and we will write that back to the Outlook calendar for you. Usually, typically we recommend just do everything in Outlook uh, and then that way everything comes across and there's only one place to check for issues. Uh, send both SMS and voice call. In this case, we're just gonna do SMS. Change appointment color when the appointment is confirmed. So I can actually change the color uh, in uh, Outlook of the appointment once they said yes. So I'm going to say yes, let's put that as a yellow. So change the appointment color when the appointment is confirmed. If you do a lot of color coding with your appointments in Outlook, then you might not want to use that option. Change appointment color when the appointment is replied to. So yes, this could be maybe an orange, say a caution, change appointment when the color, uh, when the appointment is canceled. Yes, I want that to be red. And so there's just different options here. Um, sync of multiple numbers and emails. So if you're sending uh, if you're sending reminders to more than one people, you need to turn this on. Um, I'll show you how to add that. Sync only owner events. We already talked about that. Sync appointments that fall on closed days. Uh, we're not going to worry about that. Only sync appointments that start uh, between end hours. Uh, that's just some different options. Have replies appear at the front of the appointment title. So if someone replies yes or confirmed, we're going to put that right at the front of the appointment title. I do like that as yes. Only sync appointments where there is keyword mapping. So this is a whole separate section that we can talk about. But keyword mapping essentially says, hey, this appointment is, is a specific type of appointment. We're going to send specific uh, scripting to it. So you would set up keyword mapping and then you would turn this on to yes. Search customers, I leave that as no. Uh, search subject only for customer name, otherwise this, uh, we'll search the subject of the body of the appointment. So we're only looking for customer name out of the subject line, leave that as yes. Uh, sync attendees. So what sync attendees is, is if you put somebody as an invite on your calendar, we can pull over that email address to send a reminder in our system. So. Uh, otherwise, you would need to manually type the email onto the uh, appointment itself. 
um, and then if sync attendees is true, do you want us to match the email from the customer and find the mobile number? I don't know that that works super great, just being honest. So I usually leave that as on uh, no, and then I will manually type the uh, phone number in here. So we're going to just hit save here. We're good with all that. And now we're going to make a test appointment. So we're going to March 16th and we're just going to do a quick test appointment for Donald Duck. And we're going to put his phone number on here. So whatever numbers, number or numbers you want to send the reminder need to go here on the title line. And you need to put their email up here as well. So if you do something like this, now that's how our system is going to pull the phone number and the email for Donald Duck. Um, I can do that down in the description of the event if that's better for however my process has been set up. Um, but the best practice is, is if you can to do it up on the title line of the event here. Um, some other things to note, we can pull the location over. This is maps to what we call custom field three in the description or in the scripting. Uh, so sometimes if you're using multiple locations, you're going to be at different uh, places or things change on the appointment. Maybe not even a location, but um, maybe a, a, a person or a provider or something to that effect. You can you can put in, uh, just type it in and then we can pull this off and, and insert into the script. OK, so we're going to save that appointment so we've got it made here for 9 a.m. on the 16th we're going to come back to appointment reminder and we're just going to go into settings again edit calendars we're already on this page and it's going to it's already doing a sync in progress here so it's re-syncing uh, the calendar soon enough we're going to see the appointment come over It sometimes can take just a minute or two. Now, typically the sync will take about, we run the sync every two hours in the background, which is usually fine uh, for most people. Uh, you know, it just kind of runs in the background. In this case, we're trying to do it real time. Uh, while that's working on that, we're gonna go into some of the other settings. So edit reminder scripts and message sequence are two of the most important areas to learn. So message sequence, this is the, when we are going to send the reminder and how we are going to send the reminder. This is completely customizable by you. Uh, we have some just default options in here that you can choose from. Um, in this case, the default is a 24 hour text and a 24 hour email prior to the event. And if I just hit the little edit button over here, I could go in, I could see, okay, it's gonna send a text, it's active one day prior, we're gonna send an email one day prior during these times. Um, and this actually has a text set up at one hour prior to that event, so I must have been playing with it. So. Uh, completely customizable. If I wanted to add more reminders to it, I simply just hit add new step, go ahead and tell it what I want it to do, and then save that. Now, once I have my sequence all set up in place of how I want this to go out, I do need to go up and hit the edit default reminder settings. So the default is 24 hours, but say, hey, maybe I changed it to the confirmation in the 48 hour text. I would need to go ahead and select that in the default reminder settings. Uh, from there, we take a look at what the script is going to say. So what are we going to say to our customers? And we just have a default appointment reminder script here in the system. If you hit the edit button, you can click on this. You can see here the text message. Hello, this is a reminder of your appointment, date and time. It fills in the business name from the, the business details of appointment reminder. Uh, yes or no to cancel. So very simple message. Um, one thing to note, if you go over 160 characters, you are going to be charged uh, two reminders. So this is saying two segments, which is really meaning two reminders. So uh, the length of the text is very important. You need to keep that small or you will be using more text. Now, if you're fine with that, no big deal, but just be aware. Now, if you have a very long message, my recommendation would be to put that information in the email so you can send out a text. Hey, we have the reminder, but check your email. I sent you some information about, you know, our health policy or some forms you need to fill out or whatever the case may be. So the email here, you can customize this, say whatever you want, put it in any language that you want. 
uh, and then update that and then same with voice okay now you can also make additional uh, scripts so like maybe you have one for the confirmation script that goes out and then you have one for the 24 hour prior to event you just need to go back into the sequences and tell it which script in that situation to use. And I also mentioned about the location uh, field. So you would be using a token uh, to pull over the location field. So you just hit insert token and the custom field number three is what we would use to pull over the location field. If you get stuck on some of that, uh, reach out to us uh, on the chat box down here is the best way to get all of us and we'll certainly get you pointed in the right direction uh, for that so from there let's go back hopefully we got our appointment pulled over now okay so we got the appointment pulled over here after the sink um, and if I go to the 16th appointment with Donald Duck uh, I can take a look just click on it here and it pulled over Donald's information his phone number the email that we're going to send it to um, where it pulled from the different times and then the timing that we're going to be sending and what script. So if you go to the timeline from here, the best way to kind of see what's going to happen in this situation, it's going to say, here's its text message that's going to go out. Here's the email that's going to go out, what time it's going to go out. And then here's another text message. So this is by far the best way to kind of double check everything that's going to happen before you hit that uh, send message button turn on okay and I can also come here and hit manual text and I can be messaging Donald now if I get replies from Donald it's going to end up in this box up here and remember we're going to write that information back to uh, the office 365 calendar but under the edit calendar section again if you go here and you go to edit calendar there's some information on replies so on replies, where should replies from your clients be sent to? So you would get an email in this case, it's gonna go back to this email address. You can put a comment here, uh, no space after, and then add additional email addresses to get that reply. So if you've got a receptionist or something, you can also have the reply texted to you, text and email. You can ignore the reply. So if you got a lot of appointments and they're saying yes, great, um, I simply don't want to know unless it says no. So you might say ignore uh, and it says don't send a notification when the reply is yes. So if they say yes, then I don't want to know about it. Uh, we're still going to update the calendar. We're still going to update the appointment. So you can see that we're just not going to send a notification. Uh, there's one other setting to be aware of here under the calendar options. So email self, this will email a receipt. Uh, to the below email address when a reminder is sent. So it's just, a you know, hey, we sent this reminder out to your client. Um, and then this has to do with more of our booking calendar system. Not really something to talk about now. Just know if you get into the booking system, that's where that is related to. Hope that helps uh, sing out. If you have any questions or issues with us, the best way to get a hold of us is our a uh, little chat tool down here. And if you have a specific situation or a unique situation that needs some additional help with, feel free to schedule an actual online call with us and we'll do our best to get you helped out and squared away. Thank you.